Hello, hello, hello. Today we will be trying, tasting, sampling. Today we're eating tamales. Today I will be trying flavors I've never tried before. Flavors, flavors. Tamales have flavor? Of course tamales have flavor. Um, these are just gonna be tamales that I have yet to try. And so um, I'm excited. So I, I saw these at the store, of course, and so I'm like, okay, we have to try that, right? So I have pumpkin and cream cheese, strawberry, and pineapple. Uh, I'm not making these. I'm just going to heat them up so I won't be taking them into the kitchen today. Uh, yeah, so let's go heat these up and I'll be right back. Okay. <sighs> Oh, the smells. I can smell them. Okay. Strawberry, pineapple, and pumpkin. What should I do first? Do I want pumpkin first? I thought for whatever reason I had pumpkin in my mind was going to go last. But, I mean, like, we do what we do, right? So, the first thing I notice about these is they're kind of really tiny. They're small. Um... Tiny. Um, it's okay. It's okay. We won't hold it against you. It's just so we can have more. Um, unwrap it from the husk. <sighs> this is some interesting coloring. It smells like the inside of a Hobby Lobby or some craft store. Let's see. Ooh. Okay. Oh, it's so hot. Oh. Um, okay. It tastes like any other kind of pumpkin pastry, only the consistency is really doughy. It reminds me of, um, just like a really moist cake that you kind of look at it again and make sure it wasn't, you know, that it's been cooked all the way through. Hmm. Not really sweet. It's there a little bit. Actually, I'm glad they're not that big. Still regretting having, now I'm regretting putting four of each flavor on my plate. I really didn't know how many to try. Um, try for you guys, for you guys. I'm doing this for you. Oh. Cream cheese. That's a good cross section. Boop. But they are very tiny. Maybe it's the way I heated it up. You can do it on the stove top, like in a steamer. Okay. <clears throat> Growing up, I never had a steamer. When we made tamales, 
Oh, I don't want this post to be like this. But when we made tamales, um, they were held up in the center by the molcajete, the stone thing. Or by um, foil. You crumple a piece of foil, put it at the base, put water in, let them hold up your food. So we didn't have like a veggie steamer that went inside of it. Whoa. Whoa. That went inside of our pots. It was just other tools we used in our kitchen. Hmm. So you could either use the stove top or the microwave and heating these up. I'm kind of wishing I heated them, I steamed them on the stove top though. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's go into other ones. Other ones. Hmm. I had every intention of waking up and having breakfast with you. I really did. I was like, I'm going to have coffee and tamales and it's going to be so nice because it's gotten cold outside and it's just going to be wonderful. But real life happened. And now it's past two. Ugh. It's okay. It's okay. I'm here now and I'm eating with you now. Okay, what's next? Pineapple or strawberry? Let's go strawberry. I'm very curious about the strawberry. So. Oh, so tiny. Look how tiny this is. Oh, good. Good. Is there like no filling in this? Holy shit. There's no filling. It's just masa. Strawberry flavored masa. Is that right? Are you serious? Ugh! I'm mad. I don't know why it made me so mad. Hmm. Okay. Nope. Not okay. Not okay. Oh. Look. I like to be experimental. I like to try new things. I like to be bold. Um. How do y'all feel about this? A tamale that has no filling. I get mad. I get mad at, um. Anytime I see advertisements of like something savory that goes inside of a taco shell, a tortilla, if you put something inside of a tortilla, it does not become a taco automatically. No, 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 no. Oh, I guess I'm telling you how I feel. Um, let's get to the taste. I taste strawberry flavoring, yes. It's red. I see you red dye number 40. Mm. I feel cheated. I don't know why I feel so cheated. No. Because It's not bread, it's just. <sighs> Y'all. Is this a normal thing? Is this. Okay.
Growing up, I knew tamales came in five flavors. You had pork, chicken, spicy pork, spicy chicken, and um, beans and jalapenos. I knew they came in those five flavors because that, that, that was what my family made. Those were the fit flavors my family made. Um, when I grew up, of course, I knew that there were fruit tamales and other other fillings that sometimes could be made with it. And even when I went to college, when I had friends who weren't in my bubble from different cultures show me, oh, you know, here's, here's how we make our tamales, you know. Um, so I got to try other other nationalities and how they prepare their food um, using different methods like banana leaves or we put potatoes in our tamales or um, we they prepare it differently or use different spices and I was I was up for that because it's like a new experience right like this is a new experience and so I'm enjoying this on that level but I understand why I understand why my family didn't make these because what? Like there's no filling. I'm I suspect that there will be no filling in the pineapple either. That it's just um, pineapple flavored masa. I'm right. Maybe it's chunks of pineapple. What is that? Oh my god. It's worse. I think that was a raisin. I think they put raisins in my tamales. So no filling. It feels more like I'm eating rolled stuffing. I don't really taste the pineapple. It tastes nice and sweet, so it's kind of like, um... Gimli, what am I thinking of? No, I'm not thinking of that. I'm thinking... Gimli. What am I thinking of? Cornbread. Hmm. Let's put raisin in my tamales. Hmm. Just because you have the technology doesn't mean you should do certain things. This. I wish I had pork. Well. I'm glad I tried it. Let's take something from this. Let's take something from this. We tried something new. Um. We didn't go through the extra work of making it ourselves because y'all making tamales is a process. Okay. You have to respect the process. It's, it's a lot of work. Usually when tamales get made, they're made with a large group of people like my family. We make tamales. We used to make tamales every, every December. Hmm. So believe it or not, out of the three, I do like these a little bit more than the other two. Like the strawberry strips. 
piss me off. I'm not going to lie. I don't know why it makes me so incensed. <laughs> it really does. Uh. Huh. And they're not so big because they don't have anything to be wrapped around. Hmm. Sorry. I'm sorry about that. No, I ate half the tamales on this plate and this has never ever happened before where I was like, you know what, maybe that's enough. You know, have you ever not cleared a plate of tamales? Like what the hell? <sighs> See. Hijole, you didn't even remove the hairs of the husk, really? Really? So when my family made tamales, it was broken up into several jobs. Um, the tias and my grandma would make the filling on the stove top with all the meats. Um, and then they would also get the masa ready and prepared. Adding all the spices, broth, things like that. And it happened in several batches. It was very, um, not cyclical, cyclical, cyclical. Happened in cycles. Hmm. No, these are just making me angry and I don't like it when my food makes me angry. Um, sticking everywhere in my mouth. I like those. Those, yes. Those, mmm. These. Oh, where was I? <clears throat> yes, it was a process and um, so the younger kids would soak the husk in um, a cooler filled with water to get them nice and pliable, nice and soft. Uh, and that would be the kid's job, just soaking the husk, just pushing it in the water because you know they float to the top. disappointing was this I was really excited about this y'all I'm not gonna lie I was very excited because I'm like ooh, tamales and something like dessert that's gonna be great so in between the meat making and the masa making and the husk um, soakers uh, was the fillers, right? So the people who spread the masa on the husk and then filled meat. So it was like a graduation of task when you grow up. So you start off soaking the husk and then you get up to spreader level. 
just spreading them. Um, and then once you've mastered that, you became a filler and you like filled the tamales with the filling. And then after that, well, actually, I never graduated beyond that because my aunts, my theas, <clears throat> and my grandma were, my mom and grandma were in the kitchen making the meat and the masa, so I never did that. I mean, the closest would be, like, getting to knead the masa, but even then, I mean, we're talking, like, large bowls that, like, you're kneading and, no, um... I actually missed that quite a bit. Let's see the um, skills you learn growing up, helping out in the kitchen, helping your family, and making tamales. It takes hours to make them. Like right now, this was made wrong because it's sticking to the husk because it was made on the wrong side. If I could make tamales by myself, I would. I don't know too many people who actually do, though, because it is a process. It's long, and it's a lot of work. I can try. This has me all nostalgic and disappointed. Hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna stop. <laughs> I can't anymore. I just can't. I'm really trying to think if I'm being a tamale snob right now. I don't think I am. I'm full. The flavor. So, the flavor is there. It's just. It's not the typical savory flavor that I'm used to, and I'm not holding that against these. What I'm upset about is the consistency of the tamale, because I don't know how they were made. They weren't made the traditional way, so it's like you're you're they're a different standard, I suppose. Um, that's just it. I don't even know if these are traditional. Are these traditional in some, in some communities? Is this like normal, like your family made strawberry tamales? Cause you know, I'm, I'm new with this. Also, it might be a regional thing. I've never, um, I'm not from here. I moved here within the past five years and, um, there's just like tamale shops, They're like stores, restaurants with just tamales, which is fabulous. <laughs> Believe me, it's it's pretty, pretty freaking awesome. Um, we didn't have that. Well, yeah, no, I don't think we had that. Maybe one, but you had to drive several miles out of the way. Like here, I can just go down the street and boom, I run into a tamale shop of some sort. Um, they have pan dulce there. And tamales and you can buy whatever you want but tamales growing up were largely like a family thing families make them my family made them um, and then they were given out as gifts eaten by the family or sold in some cases sometimes like we have family members who would sell them at work you know, here's, you know, five dollars for a half a dozen or something, or a dozen, or I don't know how much. I never collected money for tamales. Um, hmm. but yeah, I think ten a dozen. Um, this just, just <laughs> I, when I moved up to Seattle, I couldn't find any, any, um, 
food that reminded me of the food that I grew up with. It was very, very difficult in that. That, that was a different kind of culture shock. Um, I would have to drive down to Tacoma. <clears throat> this is, yeah. Um, where I'm now is just access to tamales, I guess, makes it so they have so many different varieties that they can make. Um, but, <laughs> the, oh, I'm sad. I might be stopping by one of those shops later today and just getting some pork just to chase this all away. <sighs> um, I don't know. Tamales are special for some people and they're special for me because I just think of family. It's okay. It's okay. Um, these weren't a win for me. Uh, it made me appreciate what I have. Uh, if you know people who make tamales, ask if you can help. Ask them if, you know, you can help them because the perks of helping is you get tamales. So, <laughs> so the tamales get divided and people get to take home, um, you know, a split of the boon. <laughs> uh, ask if you can help and more than likely they'll say sure. Absolutely. Um, the more the more the merrier. Uh, I'm gonna end it here. Uh, <laughs> I'm wishing you and yours happiness and good health. And at the very least, peace.